hello. It's time for the Wolf Den podcast on this lovely Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, yes. just like it is every single yes. week. There is nothing different about this week's Wolf Den podcast at all. Everything is normal yes. as usual. Yes. Like what right now in the Twitch chat. Hello, Edward Boba. Hello. Look at how Me- fast the Mecha Twitch chat is going. Hello, Mecha. <laughs> uh, this is uh, pre-recorded. Yes. Uh, but that's because I'm not here. But I, about a week ago, went to go check out the Asus ROG Ally X at mm-hmm. some review event. Uh, and uh, that embargo released uh, today as we're recording this. Yes. Uh, but earlier this week as this is being posted. So I had posted a video already by the mm-hmm. time this video goes out. Uh, and there's more things to talk about because I don't get to see what everyone else is going to say about the thing <laughs> yeah. before I post my video. So now that the news is out, you get to see how everybody's reacting to yes. this stuff and that that makes things a little different. But also we'll get to do a little deeper dive on all the specs and stuff because I didn't really do that in my video anyway. Mm-hmm. I just kind of talked about my impressions. Aside from that though, we had the Sony State of Play that happened last week. Yep, we had the Sony State of Play. We got uh, more news about the profitability of the PlayStation 5. We have a follow-up on that Neil Druckmann interview, the strange Neil Ooh. Druckmann interview. Uh, uh, f- we got GTA 6 news. We got um, the final swan song of Redfall uh, f- and more. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, it's a surprisingly packed show for like three days after we normally yeah come. that's very strange yeah. uh we're also going to try to do a relatively short one because i got yeah. things to do um we'll start off with the asus rg ally x yeah. this is the new version of the asus rg mm-hmm. ally i did not know the price until today yeah until as we're recording this until yeah, the price, news broke 799 800 dollars. yeah so. so the embargo was uh i believe five or it was 5 a.m uh this morning mm-hmm. uh i didn't post a video at 5 a.m because i was like no one's asleep. gonna watch a video <laughs> i was asleep and no one's gonna watch yeah. a video at 5 a.m uh although i probably should have because then i would have gotten ahead of yeah. all the other news uh but they dropped the price at 5 a.m so i also wanted to wait to see the price before right. i so that i could like modify uh my review so the original rg ally that came out last year was 700 dollars for okay. the for the beefiest one which right. uh there weren't that many skews there were yeah. there was, was just a two i think so yeah and the beefiest one only had 512 gigabytes of of internal memory yeah which, uh, i mean internal storage which is really not that much a lot of the other ones max out at a terabyte yeah um so the original rg ally uh 700 dollars mm-hmm. with 512 gigabytes of internal storage the new rg ally x which is coming out this summer so it's not out yet mm-hmm. they announced today the price is 800 dollars, right. which is more yes than <laughs> the one that came out last year yeah i don't love that yeah but there are a decent amount of spec bumps that are gonna make the it. big thing is the storage yeah and primarily the battery life Yes. It's a much larger battery. Uh, what is it? 80 watts? Of, uh, 80 battery? watts to 40 watts, which yeah. um, is double the yeah. battery. Uh, st- I don't know what the math ends up being, but uh, it's supposed to be more than double the battery life. Yeah. But I would imagine probably double is a safe yeah. is a safe bet. And that's not saying much because I was getting like an hour of Resident yeah. Evil 4 on the last one. So this one will be uh two hours probably <laughs> one and a half if you're lucky yeah uh they did this because a lot of people were modifying the old rg ally to have bigger batteries yeah that they were like drilling the back out so they just literally put more battery in it it's yeah. heavier now um I, what i didn't realize when i was uh what i completely forgot about when i was doing my review uh was that they're also going to be running the RG Ally X at a higher wattage. So the units that are in people's hands right now, not in my hand, for some right. reason, um, the units that are in people's hands right now are running about two watts more in like every case. So the original RG Ally maxes out at 25 watt TDP. This one maxes out at 28 watt TDP. Okay. And, and there's small spec bumps in all of the other uh wattage ranges there's like you know there's like basic mode performance mode turbo mode they're all slightly higher so does that mean that we're getting double the battery life in all of those different 
tiers because that's also more wattage. Yeah, so that's I was going to say, of, if they're running it at a higher wattage, then you're pro it could very well be you're getting the same amount of battery yeah. life then. And uh, I know Linus did some tests that mm -hmm. he wasn't uh, uh, allowed to disclose too much information about, but uh, a lot of those tests aren't going to be accurate to the final because they're going to run it at a higher wattage. Yeah. I don't know why they gave these units to people to play around with because like even the event that we went to there were no games on it right couldn't play a single i played power world yeah. wow <laughs> power world <laughs> the most advanced game like you can run now on your computer i don't know why power world it it, it doesn't make any sense yeah that's pick any other game there are there's like a list of games you use to like test out you know systems like with their power and stuff you know doom eternal shadow of the tomb raider crisis you know were they not confident in the in, i don't know but like because the the original can run all those games fine yeah so you would assume this new and improved one can be just as good and it's not like pow world is like no that's not that's not making anything chug but it's not well it's not optimized at all right. so like it's not very graphically intensive but at the same time it it's a system hog yeah like, like uh you can run it at really low specs and stuff, but it it crashes and shit. Like yeah. it's it's not a mark for for performance at all. Mm -hmm. There's so many other games they could have gone with it. They all had all the units had Forza on it, but it yeah. would not load. It That's kept crashing. Weird. Yeah, it was very bizarre. That it might be some sort of weird driver issue, yeah. or they installed it wrong. Yeah, I feel like they kind of like haphazardly set up mm -hmm. everything, even though we were like the last appointment of the day. Right. Um. But that means that the units that they gave these people to like try out, like Dave 2D and Linus, um, they they got to play games on it because right. they had it in their hands. They got to set it up themselves. Um, but the the performance isn't exactly what's gonna come at at the end. This yeah. is this is a pre release model, and it's locked down. It's not as there's there's gonna, there's gonna be more wattage, more performance yeah. when when the thing finally comes out. Um, so why even give it to them in the first place? Very weird. Yeah. I guess just so that they would talk about it. Probably. They, yeah. they all had great things to say about well, it. Well, yeah, I'm sure they, you know, get the news out now that a new version is coming. They're probably confident in it enough to like let it out early. Cause like people will talk about it and talk about the good yeah. stuff and any negatives that there might be They're They're probably hoping that that gets drowned out by all the positive things or that's just the fact that there's a shiny new version of the device. Interesting that you say negative things. Uh, this will be the part that we break out. Okay. So, uh, uh, inevitably, when you talk about something like this, you don't know what everybody else is going to say. Yes. You just you just got to go with whatever you're going to mm -hmm. say uh, and try to get ahead of what everybody else is. Th they want you to say or what they're thinking about. Yeah. Like they want to hear from you. Like what mm -hmm. do people? What questions do people have about right, the right. thing? And what do they want to know? Um, for whatever reason. Uh, they gave Linus and Dave 2D an hour head start from the embargo. So their embargo is lifted at 4 a.m. for some okay. reason. Also, they got the units in their hands for some reason. Yeah. I don't know why these two people got picked <laughs> to just get them, but um, they got them. And both of them started their videos talking about how uh, there's a lot of controversy around Asus right now because of the uh, warranty stuff and, right. and how like their things break especially the rg ally the sd card slot yes just just fails um and if you send it back to asus they have a really terrible uh warranty and rma system and they might not fulfill your your issue they they they, they might just give you the run around it, it's a terrible process right they have a terrible rma process so that's the thing that they decided to front load the videos with uh to get ahead of people talking about that. When I posted my video today, mm -hmm. all the comments are immediately about <laughs> the RMA issues yeah. and stuff. And I did talk about them. Yeah. I just did it at the end of the video because mm -hmm. I didn't realize how much that was going to be an issue for people. Um, also, I think it's the same thing when you talk about Lenovo on a different end. Uh, they're a Chinese company, so everybody just says, uh, don't buy Lenovo stuff because they steal your data and give it to the Chinese government. Right. So, like, no matter what, you're, you're, you're yeah. losing. There's no ethical consumption in capitalism, kids. <laughs> but that's not to say Asus shouldn't right. change their RMA issues. No, but 100%. Yeah. we have issues with Steam's RMA process. I got, I got issues with all of them. <laughs> so Take like, your pick. So, 
it's they're they're and all I got, bad. I got, I got a, I got more to say about that like towards the end of the episode. Oh, but Jesus like, yeah, <laughs> they're all bad. Is yes. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, what I ended up saying towards the end of my video is they have bad RMA issues. My recommendation is get it from a retailer that has their own good warranty service. Yeah. Uh, like if you happen to have that Best Buy service where you get the free warranty or whatever, yeah. just then you're fine because you get it through mm -hmm. Best Buy and they'll just give you another one. Or if you get an Asus RG Ally X and something goes wrong with it, chances are you're going to have to fix it yourself. Yeah. And a lot of people watching this are probably okay with that, yeah. but it just is what it is. Uh, I don't love that about them either, but mm -hmm. it just is what it is. Now, uh, the, what I thought the controversy was going to be for my video was okay. I thought it was going to be about uh, review events because yes. another YouTuber posted a video uh, Gerald Undone posted a video on uh, review events for for a camera because he does camera stuff. Yeah, uh, and he's right about that. Like they try to wine and dine you to butter you up. It's it, we've heard about it from like game review events yeah. when you like come to other like game reviewers will talk about how like they'll preview a game, but the the game company will like fly you out. Yeah, they like, put you up in a hotel. They treat yeah. you to dinner. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I did that once with uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, and, and I was like, "This game rules!" Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then the game came out, and everyone hated the game. <laughs> so all your theories are right; they yeah. do they do color the perception of the game. No, there is there is a little bit to that because yeah. it's cool to be there and talk to the people who made the thing and see their reasoning for why things are the way that they are. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you're getting like a human face to the company. So yeah. like that changes the things. It's, it's yeah. like, do you want to say bad things about a friend you just met? Yeah. But I I don't care. <laughs> if, you, if you did something that I don't like, yeah. I, it's my job to say it. Yeah. You know, I don't think that's, I think that's pretty apparent. I could see how that would skew perceptions for certain people. Yeah. And I know like people take a lot of pride in their work and to hear like some guy you know just shit all over it on youtube it's like it's it sucks it's painful but at the same yeah. token like you're selling something that's 800 dollars. you know you expect it to work and work properly so i think people have a right to know about any problems that you as a company have the uh what the previous device was going through and just let people need to be aware of what they're getting into before they sink all that money into it the the issue with the original rg ally the SD card issue, the micro SD card yeah. issue. Uh, they are avoiding talking about it. Right. They, which is bad. <laughs> that's very bad. They, they, it, it reminds me a lot of Nintendo with the Joy-Con drift. Yeah. They're not. They will not explicitly acknowledge the Joy-Con drift, but there's evidence of them trying to fix it. Yeah. Um, because they don't want to be liable. But right. Nintendo is fixing it. Yeah. Uh, Asus seems to not be. Yeah. They claim that they uh will uh fix it if you send it in, but there's evidence that they give you the runaround. There's yeah. evidence that they charge you money for it. Uh, Dave2D emailed Asus and said, I'm not, review I'm not even going to make a video for you unless you address the micro SD card issue or mm -hmm. your RMA issues. And they emailed him back and said that all Asus RG allies will have an extended warranty of two years, the previous model. Okay. So it's already been a year. You yeah. get another year. Okay. Uh, but... Judging by uh, Gamers Nexus and him sending his review unit in and then him getting basically a, a ransom note back, <laughs> um, they might just not. They might yeah. make up some bullshit reason for them not to fix the micro SD card mm -hmm. issue. And Linus also brought up that the micro SD card issue, we thought it was, uh, I always say it's a heat issue, like it overheats. And, That's what I thought it was. Yeah. Um, it could still be that. Yeah. Um, that's why they moved it in, yeah. this, in this version. But uh, Linus was saying that it is a fuse that just breaks and then the whole thing's fucked. Okay. Uh, but I think heat could do that too, can't it? It could just overheat and blow yeah. the fuse. Yeah. So, but anyway, back when they discovered this issue, they changed the fan curve so that it wouldn't get as hot. Right. Um, they didn't publicly admit that it was because of micro SD card. They moved it in this one. Yeah. So it's clear that the micro SD card was getting hot. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's just one of the many changes. Yeah. Um, I just want to say real quick, I'm on the Wikipedia page for the Ally, and 
you can tell I'm in the middle of an update because there's just a sentence that is the ROG Ally X and then nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, so if yeah. I hit refresh, it might be filled out. You caught them writing yeah. it out. Uh, one last that's, thing. That's fun. One last thing about uh, the review event. Uh, talking about how it could like skew your perception. You see people in real life, so you like might view them as friends. You don't want to yeah, say yeah. bad things to your friends. I will say the Fox was there grilling them on <laughs> why they've used a uh, USB uh, 4 and not Oculink. Okay. You would not shut the fuck up about <laughs> Oculink. Because Oculink is a, a higher bandwidth. Yeah. Uh, USB 4 is just way more uh, universal. It's convenient, yeah. It's a lot more convenient. For, yeah. Not everybody's going to want to use an eGPU. Yeah. Having that extra port is more useful. Yeah, more you can do more with it. Than, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can understand why it'd be cool to have an, like a really high bandwidth eGPU, but... Yeah. It would be more useful to more people to have someone that could double as an eGPU, even if it's a lower bandwidth, and just be an extra port. Okay. Uh, one of the great things about the Lenovo Legion Go is that it has two ports. Yeah. So this is the top of the Asus ROG Ally. That's nor X, I'm sorry. This is normally where the USB... I'm sorry. I'm having a stroke. <laughs> it's a dip, weird day today. Yeah. <laughs> weird, we don't usually do it as a day. Uh, this is usually where the micro SD card slot is. Yes. Now it has moved over here. Instead, you got two USB ports, and I think the one on the right is USB four. I, I think they're labeled, but I don't think I could they be are wrong. labeled. Oh, well, I said I could be wrong because when I looked at it, I could not tell which. I thought it was the left one. Well, I mean, and then Line, I saw Linus's video, and he highlighted the right one. Okay. But he could be wrong. He could be wrong. So, actually, he can't be because I watched him plug it in. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'd rather have two ports. Right. It. They should be spread out, but it's yeah. fine. It's fine. They should do one on the top and one on the bottom. Yeah, but as long as we're as long as we're getting two, yeah, I'm not gonna complain too much. Um, all right, so let's get into the specs. This is an article from CNET. Uh, Asus ROG Ally X gaming handheld was built from your wishes. Wow! Wow! They they heard they got my letter to Santa. Uh, Asus refreshed its Republic of Gamers Ally. I've never seen it written out like that. <laughs> Gaming hands. I mean, that is its proper government name. <laughs> <laughs> Redesigning it based on user feedback for the new RG Ally X. It's not a completely new device, though it's close. And there's enough here that if you passed on the original Ally, you might consider a second look. Although if you do, you'll see the price has increased from $700 to $800. Oh, did we mention that? I'm sure they'll mention it here, but uh, it's a terabyte now. Yes. So it's a hundred dollars more, mm -hmm. but you're getting a terabyte of storage instead mm -hmm. of five hundred twelve gigabytes, and uh, increased memory. It's going from sixteen to twenty four, to twenty four, yeah. and it's faster. Which is the rumors we talked about previously. Yeah. Aside from the general appearance, for uh, the only carryovers from the Ally to the Ally X are the AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor and seven inch full HD touch display, and it's still running Windows eleven. What else would? Linux, I guess. Yeah. So if your wish list had those being replaced, maybe next time. But just about everything else has changed for the RG Ally X. For starters, instead of just the 512 gigabytes of storage, the Ally X will have a one terabyte option. If that turns out not to be enough, the device's M.2 2280 solid state drive is accessible for upgrade. That's another huge thing that I was not expecting and I was kind of shocked by when I saw it on, on the display. Yeah. yeah. They had it opened up. Uh, a full-sized SSD in, in there. That's great. Because that just gives you so many more options now. Yeah, I didn't realize... I realized that it would be cheaper for mm -hmm. people because those are just more widely available. Yeah. I didn't realize that there just are bigger storage options. Like, you can get, like, an 8 terabyte, yeah. terabyte and throw it in yeah. there, which would be absolutely absurd. I mean, I mean that, that would probably get hot, too. Yeah, that's also, you know about the same price as the system itself in a terabyte ssd yeah, but so people are gonna do it I, I also didn't realize people were modding their old ones to That's do insane. that yeah yeah anyway uh we have the spec list here display it's the same display 128 hertz refresh rate uh also variable refresh rate which is okay. a big deal to a lot of people uh z1 extreme uh 204 gigabyte whoa 24 gigabytes <laughs> lpddr5x they forgot the X. It's in the name. <laughs> That's true. Uh, and yeah, that gives you more yeah. uh, speed. Uh, and then the SSD is one terabyte. 
all this stuff is the same. 80 watt hour battery. Uh, oh, this is something I forgot. It's going to come with the same USB-C uh, 65 watt charger, the same exact one from the last one, but it can handle up to 100 watts. So if you oh. have like one of those Ugreen chargers yeah. that we have uh, that can do 100 watts or more, or even the MacBook charger, yeah. um, you can get up to 100 watt fast charging. So it will charge faster if you use a different charger than yeah. the one that it comes with. So that's interesting. The last one would not do that. Right. Asus also increased the amount of system memory. Yeah, we know all that. Uh, battery life is always an obstacle with these gaming handhelds, but the Ally's 40 watt hour battery pack was a bit too small for users. The Ally X has all new battery. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a little heavier now. Uh, they managed to offset some of it with the case. They like made the case lighter. Right. Uh, but all in all, it's it's slightly heavier, but really you don't really notice much. It's also a little thicker, but you don't notice that either really. Uh, to accommodate the larger battery, Asus had also redesigned the motherboard and cooling system. Uh, I didn't really talk about this too much, but they did make a smaller one somehow that's supposed to cool it better. Right. The process resulted in an improving cooling solution that included smaller but more efficient fans, uh, as well as a smaller and more efficient uh, heat sink. The combination resulted in a temperature drop of up to 42 degrees Fahrenheit. A drop of 42 degrees? Like a whole... F no, six... A temperature drop... Of up to 42 degrees Fahrenheit. Like 42 degrees less? Or down to 42 degrees Fahrenheit. Yep. And then it says 6 degrees Celsius. I That. I don't know Fahrenheit yeah. to Celsius. Well, zero. Is it like a curve? You can't like. Yeah. Like zero degrees Celsius is freezing. Th that I understand. Yeah. So like you're only six points above freezing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But isn't it a curve? This is like, like that's. That's very close to freezing. <laughs> so that's got to be pretty cold. Asus said the cooling system also decreased the touchscreen temperature. So it's more comfortable to use. So pe apparently they said people complained about how it was hot to the touch. Right. Never have I ever noticed that. Okay. Uh, the Lenovo Legion Go gets hot to the right. touch and it's loud as fuck. Yeah. Uh, the MSI Claw. Very cool. Otherwise, terrible device, yeah. <laughs> but, but cool to the touch. Yeah. Lastly, while it doesn't look too different from the Ally, the Ally X has slightly deeper and more rounded hand grips, smaller rear macro buttons to reduce accidental presses, a more precise D-pad, more durable joysticks with stiffer springs, and better and overall control layouts. Uh, yeah, I didn't mention this in my video either. They moved uh, the thumbsticks slightly. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's supposed to be more ergonomic. Also... The buttons are taller, but you don't notice it. They're only taller because the case is different. Yeah. So it, they don't actually sit any higher. I think in Linus's video, he talks how they're taller. But if you put the two devices next to each other, they will, they will look exactly yeah. the same. You won't actually notice it when you play it. All right. So that's the RG Ally X. Uh, it is $800 for yes. all of that. With all of the specs, if you're just looking at the specs, it is the one to go with right now it is the, right if you want a windows one you are cool with linux steam deck's the way to go yes but the rg ally x uh with all the specs we have here seems to put it in the top spot of pc handhelds yeah however it is now the most expensive if you're putting it against the other ones like yeah. the lenovo legion go and even the msi claw i think the msi claw maxes out at around the same price yeah but that one's intel yeah people got problems with that so uh oh the msi claw is like up to 900 dollars depending on so what's the uh, there's a 700 uh there is an 800 dollar option yeah I'm, I'm going to uh um, the one that i have is 800 yeah i'm going to their website now just to see i think the one that i did i pay for that uh so I, all right i'll just go for the this one uh claw a a1M, $800. Is that a terabyte? That is a terabyte. That's going to have 16 gigabytes of internal, uh, of RAM. Though. Yeah. So uh, even though this is the same price, the Ryzen Z1 Extreme is going to uh, give you more uh, compatibility. Yeah. And it's got 24 gigabytes of fast RAM, and that's only got 16 mm -hmm. gigabytes. I think it is the faster RAM, though. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. So, 
this positions it in a good spot, but it makes you spend a little more money. Yeah. And uh, I was hoping this would just be a replacement for last year's model so that that would hopefully drive the price of last year's model down, yeah. which is on sale now, like all the time. It, yeah. it, it launched at $700, but you can get it for, I think, $630 I've right now. I've seen it for like, yeah, like 600 yeah. So it'll probably go down when this one comes out too. And that one's still a great deal if you only want to spend 600 bucks. That's yeah. a $200 discount. You'll still be able to play games pretty well on that thing. Um, but if you want something brand new, this, uh, seems pretty good. But again, I was hoping this would be like $700, like mm -hmm. a replacement. I actually, I don't even mind if they did the same amount of Ram. Yeah. At all these the, changes. The switch OLED model, you know, just, it's slightly better and it's only $50 more. Yeah. We were talking about when we heard the specs leaked, I was equating this to the Steam Deck OLED where yeah. it has, uh, faster memory and a better screen and stuff mm -hmm. but overall it's kind of the same but the 24 gigabytes really changes things yeah. it really makes it an actual performance bump uh dave 2d brought up a good point he said that he thinks the original rg ally uh they charged too little for it and they lost money on okay. it so now this one they have to charge more for yeah which would kind of make sense otherwise if you have a pc handheld already uh you don't you don't this you don't need this yeah you don't need that extra memory you just wait till uh next year i'm sure they'll have another one mm -hmm. and that's it there you go and i won't get one in my hands for another month and the review embargoes are up at the end of july so okay that's like a long way to yeah. go until we're, you're gonna hear anything about the rg ally x again mm-hmm also, we got to hold up and wait to see what problems we're going to have yeah. with the RG Ally X because there might be some oh, random problems. There's definitely going to be. You got to remember to give it to me for a week to see if I can like <laughs> break it. Do you want to talk about your issues, your Steam Deck issues now? Yeah, specifically because I did just went ahead and buy a Steam Deck. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> it's all sorted out. I... <laughs> What, what, do you mean, what do you mean it's all sorted what out? What happened was I did the in, the installation, like the initial setup, okay. and it stalled out at 1%. Is this OLED? It's a refurb. It's a 512 refurb. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, 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 you one, have this, it has a screen. Yeah. <laughs> How is the screen? It's good. It's good. Yeah, okay. it's good. Okay. Um, so a quick Google search showed me that if you connect the Steam Deck to a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal on startup, it stalls out. At one second remaining. I I have never had that Me happen. Me neither. I've never I've heard had of this. Fucking three different Steam there's decks like at least here. there's three different Reddit threads I read. Just to make sure I wasn't crazy. That's a thing. Five gigahertz? Five gigahertz Wi Fi signal. Yeah. So So and I I have one I think I have one of those Wi Fi's that does both. Yeah. Yeah, I have the without the, like saying that it does both. Right. Like, I, like, like, if a device asks for 2.4 gigahertz, it'll mm -hmm. just give it 2.4. I have the Google Mesh router, uh -huh. and that doesn't let you manually switch back and forth per device. It just is. So I had to shut down the Steam Deck and connect it uh, wired to to the internet in order for the startup process. That's to That's insane. Yeah, I've never heard of this before. Mike. Yeah, not me neither. Because but, I, again, mine are. It's a friggin' Five gigahertz yeah. connection. I think there might be a two point four gigahertz like mass. Well, band yeah, they that usually have, have both in there. Yeah, yeah, so that like you know, because you know, the Google call... router might not be automatically switching. That's to... the thing. Like yeah. it doesn't automatically switch, and it doesn't let you manually switch if you need to. That's really so. Bizarre. I had to hardwire it to the internet in order to get it to set up. But it's set up, and it's great, and I love it. It's so much better than everything else. <laughs> I have the MSI Claw here if you want to take it back. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'm done with it. Um, but yeah, refurb is the way to go, because this was significantly cheaper than... Yeah, how, how much? 512, how much? Uh, f What was it? It was like 360 before tax? Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I think new. you can still get it new, but it's like 400-something. And the... What is it? The lowest tier Steam Deck that you can still buy new... Is only like ten dollars less, and it's sixty four gigs. Is that uh, the uh, etched glass screen? The, yeah, that's the, the one with the, with the good screen. Yeah. So oh. some people don't like. It. Well, some I people like it. can go scratch. <laughs> I, I, I like it a lot. Yeah. 
Did you put MU deck on it? I did not put MU deck on it. I just got whatever I was playing previously. Do you that. have your old SD card? I think I do. I have to look. Just put it in. Did I give you the D brand case when I gave it back the old one? Because I can't Maybe find it. Maybe it's on it. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah. If it's on, I mean, I wouldn't have taken it off. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, All right. good luck. Thank you. I'll let you know what happens uh, <laughs> in a month. Um, all right. All Next, right. let's go real quick through the Sony State of Play. Yeah. Uh, I didn't watch it. But I didn't I... watch it either because uh, these have historically been terrible. Yeah, and I'll be honest. There's never like, anything in these that I, that I care about. There wasn't anything in here that like, stood out to me, and I'm like, yes! you know yeah. so we'll just like fire through it real quick well there is something that i'm very excited for this. okay I'm, I'm very happy i still haven't even watched the trailer for it but we'll, <laughs> we'll get there okay uh so speaking of fire firewalk studio shares a release date and first gameplay trailer for concord uh it's a 5v5 multiplayer shooter yes i think it's like overwatch yeah why are we doing this i saw my favorite was uh aj from uh redirects uh tweeted uh we have guardians of the galaxy at home <laughs> yeah that's this, what it i literally like. scrolling through this i thought this was guardians of the galaxy yeah uh i don't know i like it's so weird to me that like sony is well, not just sony like most companies but like sony specifically said they're gonna invest heavily in live service games and like we're seeing very clearly that those are not doing well that people don't want those games anymore and here they're just like yeah you do <laughs> not only that they're like live service games that would have been good 10 years ago. Yeah. Like, it, we've seen this Overwatch style te uh, hero shooter done like a thousand times yeah. already, and, and nothing has been successful besides Overwatch, and Overwatch isn't uh, successful anymore. Yeah. Uh, you have Marvel Rivals. Yeah. And that was interesting until I saw streamers play it, and I was like, this looks really boring. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next is uh, God of War Ragnarok coming to PC this September. That's cool. Um, it will require a uh, PlayStation login for this single-player game. They need to just expand that account system to other countries. Yeah. Like, it's really not a big deal that you need to log in to PlayStation. It's the fact that that makes it so you can't buy this in a lot of countries. Yeah, I mean, it is and it isn't because... You know, when you're buying a game on PC, you expect the game to just work. You know, you, you don't expect to log into a console service in yeah. order to play your PC game. Yeah. I like, mean, if you want to use the features in there, like trophies and whatnot, sure. But the game should still fundamentally just work without it. If, that, if that's the price I have to pay to get PlayStation games on the computer, then I'll give them my fucking email. That I already gave them. Well, I mean, yeah. like, we have PlayStation accounts. We have yeah. PS5s. Yeah, yeah. There are people who, there are PC gamers who don't have PlayStations. Yeah, but those same PC gamers are just fine giving Valve <laughs> their email address and Epic Games their email address and yeah, Battle.net but, their email address. Yeah, but Valve's cool. <laughs> That's why, like, the only reason I think this is an issue is because it locks out other countries. I mean, that's that's and you the, have to give your email, but that's like, the big real issue that yeah. it locks out a lot of countries. And then there's just like you know all like the personal reasons why you don't want to give Sony like any yeah. information. Obviously, I'd like it if you could just turn the game on and everything just works without you having right. to do much. But yeah, it is what it is. Uh, Dynasty Warriors Origins coming next year. I uh, Dynasty Warriors. Yeah, good on them for like keeping it going for remembering Dynasty. Warriors. Yeah. <laughs> uh upcoming open world rpg infinity nikki is getting a beta test sometime this year so i don't know what this is it yeah. says open world rpg it looks like a platformer mm -hmm. and it looks like a photo game yeah uh described as an open world dress-up adventure what the fuck? sees the titular character arrive on the continent of Mirrorland along with her friend momo uh she will travel to various nations each with a different history and uh, culture to explore. In addition, Nikki will encounter a ton of adorable creatures. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Where, uh, where winds meet. Yes, that is heading to PS5. No real date. Uh, Ballad of Antara is the high fidelity free to play action RPG releasing next year. Oh, we cool. love action RPGs. Yes. Uh, free to play specifically. Oh. So. Uh, the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners developer announces a new VR game. Uh, I think it's in. Uh, I think it's a sequel to The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. Okay. Uh, I think. Don't quote me on that. 
Uh, Alien Rogue Insurrection is coming this holiday for PSVR too. Can't wait to shit my pants with that one. Oh, uh, VR. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Marvel Rivals coming to PS5. Closed beta begins in July. We just talked about yes, how much we, we love Marvel Rivals. Oh, yeah. Can't wait. Until Dawn has uh, got a new trailer and a fall 2024 release window for PC and PS5. Uh, Path of Exile 2 coming in late, coming to early access in late 2024. Silent Hill 2 Remake finally has a release date, October 8th for PC and PS5. A lot of, lot of talk about this one because everybody looks different. <laughs> I heard, I saw a TikTok of people, of a guy who was mad that they changed the design of the woman in it. Yeah. Because uh, she used to have a, a sexy uh, dress that was in the style of Christina Aguilera. Yeah. <laughs> and now she has a st still sexy dress right. that's less... A little less sexy. Than the I last mean, the, one. the thing with this Silent Hill 2, um, from because I never like got far in it, like when I played it. Uh, but everything I've seen about it since it's come out is like it's a very weird and personal game about the character's struggles with you know sexual desires and like yeah. infidelity and stuff. So I understand like you know making characters less sexy kind of defeats the purpose of like what the original point was also too there's no way that like it's gonna hit the same levels of like shock and horror that the original did yeah. because not just because it's a remake but because like this is clearly a more corporate focused product rather than the work of like a team trying to make like a statement about something it's also different because you were working with PS2 graphics, so you can hide a lot of things behind, yeah. like the mush. The of, mush and the of, fog, specifically. Yeah, yeah, and now things need to look realistic, so yeah. it's going to be different. It's going to be, yeah, I don't I don't really have a lot of faith in this. Yeah. I feel like they're going to Resident Evil it too much, which just basically means they're going to get more action-y, which is not what Silent Hill is at all. So the more I see of it, the less and less I'm interested in it. And the more and more it actually makes me want to just go back and play the original on PS2. My understanding is that the, in the original game, you're just like a weak guy who's like, yeah. uh, basically scared of everything and has to run away. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> you know, that game, that game has, you know, my favorite Zelda element weapon degradation, but it actually kind of makes sense in that game. Mm. Cause you're not supposed to fight. You're not supposed to engage in the combat. You're supposed to run away. Yeah. And that's, probably going to be different yeah uh, oh yeah in, in this uh, the the guy i saw on tiktok who was arguing about this was saying that they uh he was saying the same thing how uh it's about the guy's sexual desires so the the woman in it is supposed to be like overly sexualized yeah. on purpose uh his argument was that the outfit she wears in the original is something that a woman would not normally wear and I would argue the outfit that she's wearing in this one is also an outfit that a woman would not normally wear. I think wear. it was, I forgot his name, but he worked on the Suicide Squad game and he said that it's, this look is the result of a team that's mostly men trying to overcorrect. And I think the old one is a result of a team of mostly men. <laughs> well, they it, took Christina Aguilera off the red carpet and was like, "That's a dress." His reasoning was, if you had women on the team, like they can, they can tell you, like yeah we like dressing sexy there's just a way to do it yes that doesn't feel gross and the design that's there now is like an overcorrection, as it were for like yeah. what the past design was this other argument was that it's supposed to be what this guy thinks yeah. a woman would look like and right. then his argument was that this does not look like that yeah. but it i think it still kind of looks like it. it's just a different version of it i mean she's still a pretty lady like yeah. she's just not showing her legs as much uh also, she does look a lot like Ashley uh, from Resident Evil. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why that, that's the look they're going for. Anyway. Uh, Capcom shares a new look at Monster Hunter Wilds. Uh, I don't think they have a release date yet. Uh, there's, there's the big one. Team Asobi unveils a new Astrobot game coming this September. September 6th, exclusively on the PS5. It is just titled Astrobot. So uh, this is the one that I'm excited for, and I had not actually seen the trailer for this. I think this is the one most people are excited for, honestly. Yeah, I saw a lot of hubbub on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like the last Astrobot game, one of the only games that I finished on the PlayStation 5. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's great, and yeah. I was excited to see a full game of that. And this one, I think they said 80 worlds. Wow. So that's a lot. Yeah. I, I assume a world is a level. Yeah. Um, and... Part of what everybody loved about the last Astro 
Xbox game was that there were a ton of PlayStation references. Yes. That was basically the whole game. Mm -hmm. And also it showed off the, the, the all of the functionality of the DualSense. Yes. And this is going to do all of the same stuff. There's going to be a longer. lot of references yeah. and uh, all of the functionality of the DualSense. And yes, it will be way longer. Yeah. I don't need it to be longer. No. But... Uh, it's nice that it's going to be a big game. Yeah, that's the thing. Because like the Astro's Playroom, the previous game we were talking about, you know, that really, did, as good as it was, it felt it still was technically a tech demo for the yeah. PlayStation 5 and the DualSense. Yeah. Um, so now you expand it into a full game. There's so much more you can do with it. Yeah. So that's really fun. This kind of just looks exactly like Astro's Playroom. Yeah. Which is fine. Yeah. I, I like that game. Also, too, like, it's one of the only, like, family-friendly games that, like, is that Sony first party is like putting out. Yeah. You know, you got like God of War, the last of us, uh, even like horizon and Spider-Man are a little bit like older focused. Whereas and this what, is like, and what do all those games have in common? They're all third person action games. Yeah. This is also a third person action game, but it's a platformer. Yeah. You know, uh, not so much focused on fighting or shooting your, yeah, this is more focused on like fun and whimsy and all that nonsense. Yeah. So I, I'm, excited for this one yeah unfortunately uh like sony's been releasing a lot of stuff on pc that's just donkey <laughs> we have donkey or, Kong or, at home that looks like the enemy from kirby's from kirby and the forgotten land anyway uh sony has been releasing a lot of stuff on pc uh-huh unfortunately this is gonna rely pretty heavily on the functionality of the dual sense yeah so i don't see that happening yeah i don't yeah, I don't think there's going to be a way to... Although, I don't know, because like they made a big deal about Ratchet and Clank can't work without a SSD, and then they released it on PC with hard drive compatibility. They would have to change parts of the game to make it so you could uh, navigate without the functionality of the DualSense. Yeah. Or they make you just plug in a DualSense to your computer. Yeah. Um, which is which, easy enough to do. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate that. Uh, I guess I'll just have to plug my PS5. Yeah. Is that the last thing? Uh, yeah, that was it. Okay. Yeah, really, the only thing I care about is Astro. Yeah. Bond. Everything else was like cool, whatever. but like <laughs> it's cool that we're getting a lot of content. But again, it's all third-person action games, and they're all they all kind of are starting to look the same, but with yeah. really uh, uh, really like uh, lifelike graphics. Uh, over the top like explosions and stuff and, and yeah. over the top action that all ends up like seeming like the same there thing. was a picture on twitter that was like going around it was like it was like a close up of four different eyes from like horizon and god of war and i think the last of us and one other and it was like which game has the best graphics and like they all look the same <laughs> yeah. they're all basically the same it's very impressive yes but i've been seeing close-ups like that since half-life yeah and like they looked impressive when it was half-life yeah <laughs> you know yeah you can't really impress people with graphics anymore oh. and like if you if you're going to like you really need to like do something i need to see it in my game like, yeah i turn the game on and yeah. i start playing it if, if if i see the graphics like that and i'm moving the character and it looks like that yeah. then i'm then i'm floored yeah but these trailers and demos and stuff uh I I know things are going to change by the time it gets to also my console. Also, like, trailers and, like, screenshots and stuff that they release, like, people don't talk about it that much anymore, but, like, it's, they're manipulated. Yeah. Like, we used to call it bullshot because they would literally just take a screenshot of it and, like, you know, gussy it up to, like, make it look a little bit better than what the actual end game is going to be. Or they would, uh, in the engine, they would, they would position the camera and get the screenshot, but they yeah. would, they would render, they would take all of the GPU to render the whole screenshot. Yeah. And that's something that wouldn't happen when you're live playing yeah. the game. Anyway. Yeah. I'm never excited for a Sony state of play <laughs> because they, a lot of times they don't even announce anything new. They just talk about yeah. stuff that we knew about already. And uh, there's just very little that Sony can do to like get me excited i yeah. think the only thing that they could do is astro bot and they did yeah. and that's cool and i'm excited to play that mm -hmm. or they can announce the psp too yeah then i'll be excited. well they did they called it the portal oh really <laughs> yeah 
I haven't heard about and that. It's not what anybody wanted. Uh, all right, but people keep buying it for some reason. People keep talking about it. People love that thing. I was talking about. I was talking to one of the Asus guys. Yeah. About the PlayStation Portal, he was saying how he loved it, and I was like, "That thing fucking sucks." I'm I just kidding. I I may I might gotta try it again because like I don't understand. Like these are people who don't remote play, and then right. the Portal comes out, and they decided to try remote play. Yeah, if you've tried remote play before the PlayStation Portal, you know what remote play feels like. Well, the thing is, like I I've never tried remote play anywhere near as much as you have, and even I could see like there was a problem. It is laggy. My PlayStation is, as if I'm sitting on the couch, the PlayStation is where you are. Yeah. And it's got reception issues. Well, it's so. got to go from the PlayStation to your router yeah. back to the portal. So, yeah, I don't I don't understand it. <laughs> it it's the, the biggest issue is the infrastructure that Sony has. Yeah. Like, uh, you'd think that they have a product that only uses this infrastructure mm -hmm. you'd think they'd fix the infrastructure yeah. and they just didn't i don't understand it meanwhile uh game pass is great yeah. i was playing it in a fucking hotel and sony has something similar to game pass yeah why doesn't that work on the playstation portal that's the big thing it's the better service yeah that you don't need to connect it to your yeah. playstation 5 at all like i understand wanting to get like a product in at like a low price point because it's only like 200 dollars but imagine so, the subscriptions they could sell. Yeah. After like you get a portal, realize it sucks connecting even, you to PlayStation even 5 like, and then you yeah. up, sell it upsell. for $300 and then charge out the wazoo for subscription services. Wow. Well, yeah. $200 put PlayStation Now on it and get yeah. people to pay the $180 a year for the fucking subscription. Well, cuz like $300 gives it um that puts it in like Switch territory and give it a little bit more processing power so maybe you can Put a game on there. If run you, it locally. If you could run local games on it, I'd pay more than three hundred dollars. Yeah. But if you're gonna put PlayStation Now on it, just put PlayStation Now on yeah. it at two hundred dollars because you're gonna be selling the subscriptions, and that's yeah. gonna lock people in for a while. That'll get a lot more people interested in your fucking cloud service. Yeah. Anyway, what's this more about PlayStation? Yeah. Uh, the PlayStation 5 generation is officially the most profitable Sony console generation to date. Oh. Uh, this comes from the company's game and network service business segment, meaning uh, slides and presentation, which were shared today following the company's earnings report two weeks ago. In the presentation, Sony revealed that the PlayStation 5 generation has brought in $106 billion in sales since launch, outpacing every past console at the same point in this generation. Uh, stick some asterisks on that figure real quick, though. First of all, Sony uh, reports that the PS4 generation brought in a total of $107 billion in sales, uh, which is obviously more than $106 billion, but the PS4 generation is taking a, uh, is taken as a whole from fiscal 2013 to fiscal 2019 and includes three more years than the PlayStation 5 generation, which spans oh. fiscal 2020 to fiscal 2023. Four years into the PS4's life cycle, it was still well behind where the PS5 is now, and the PS5 is on pace to easily pass the PS4's generation's total sales sometime this year. It's also worth noting that these dollar amounts are total sales over the course of the console generation, not a reflection of sale of specific hardware or game sales. The PS5 generation encompasses not just the PS5 itself, but everything the business is doing during this generation, including PS4 sales and games released during this period. So it takes all with so take it all with a grain of salt in uh take it all with a grain of salt. So did the PS4 is that 580 million price point uh is that what that is 580 million dollars uh it's 580 dollars so. i'm assuming that's in millions yeah uh i'm assuming when they say the ps4 generation they also mean the same thing like ps3 sales during yeah. the time of the ps4 so yeah. yeah okay so they're making more money yeah okay good on them good on, i i mean yeah they're, yeah they're, they're, they're I mean, doing obviously very good. they're a successful business they know yeah. that like they have to keep doing more and it's more. just they're not selling they're selling a lot of PS5s, but not that many compared to previous. Yeah, generations. they're still they're still saying that like, what is it? Half of PS4 users have not upgraded to PS5, yeah. and I think that good number is going to be like that for a long time. So, hearing that, it sounds like they might not be doing as good. But then seeing this, it looks like they're doing just fine. Well, everything's. Fine. It says uh, this article goes on to say like even with that, uh, PS5 life to date spend is significantly higher than life to date on PS4. 
Uh, DLC, uh, DLC services and peripheral spending is up, but full game content spending is down a little on PS5 compared to PS4. Uh, full game content? Like buying a full game. Yeah. Like a, like a retail game for like the full $70 price. These companies are figuring out how to nickel and dime you in other ways. Yeah. And it's working, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Yep. It, it, vote with your wallet. If you don't like them charging you for DLC and bullshit, yeah. stop buying it. All right, last Sony news. Uh, they said, we're sorry about the Neil Druckmann interview, and they pulled it. Yeah. Uh, last week, Sony published a seemingly innocuous bit of fluff uh, touting its long-term creative entertainment vision in broad terms, along with some uh, interviews with key people. Neil Druckmann, the studio head for Naughty Dog, one of uh, Sony's uh, studios, uh, was one of the interviews, and his interview made waves in the game world. According to the interview, Druckmann said AI could create nuanced dialogue and characters, uh, and also that the new Naughty Dog game that's being developed could redefine mainstream perceptions of gaming. I never heard anything about AI from this Neil Druckmann interview. The, I this think is completely new information to me. We talked about it last week, and I didn't hear AI Well, once. that got overshadowed by the could redefine modern gaming. That's I, that's yeah. much bigger news if Neil Druckmann yeah. talks about AI, because he does not yeah. seem like the guy that would try to perpetuate that. No, definitely that. not. Uh, well, it looks like he didn't say any of that. Yeah. Uh, Druckmann was wildly misquoted by his own employers. A few days after the Sony published the interview, Druckmann took to Twitter and said, this is not quite what I said. He then went full, he, he then went full Ellie in revenge mode on Sony, posting a section of the original, original interview transcript. Uh, he was actually very polite, to be honest. Uh, regardless, everything uh, does not add up. Uh, game reporter Steven Totillo shared his own comparison of what Druckmann said versus what Sony published, bolding the words in Sony's answer that Druckmann never said. Um, and those words were a majority of the quote. Sony basically put words in his mouth, published them, uh, kicking off the classic gamer freakout. There's all the molded words on yeah. the screen right now. Yeah, th- that bottom part is the one. That's all just like... That's the part where it says that it could redefine games. Yeah. Uh, they just... But a lot of, and yeah. even in the original, Neil Druckmann says like I'm rambling right now. Yeah, <laughs> like he knew he wasn't really. Making like I understand sense. like most of the time, like even like with actual like journalistic interviews, like you'll get a thing like edited for like length or whatever. Like well, that's a normal thing to do. I can understand taking a quote, yeah, out of context, but they put words in his mouth. They literally created the context. Yeah, that, that wasn't was very there. weird. Yeah. That's very strange for them to do that. Yeah. Uh, five days later, Sony has removed the interview from its site entirely. However, it didn't just delete the page. They left it up with an apology uh, to Neil and the Naughty Dog team for any negative impact this interview may have caused. Um, and the end gadgets writer favorite bit is this. In re-reviewing our recent interview with Naughty Dog's Neil Druckmann, we found several uh, significant errors and inaccuracies that don't represent his percep- uh, perceptive and perspective and values, including topics such as animation, writing, technology, AI, and future projects. Yeah, uh, hopefully that'll uh, make them reconsider how they do interviews. It's so crazy that, like, you know, they they wanted to do an interview with him. Like, they're trying to control the narrative in the medium of, like, what, they're, what they want to say about Sony. Like, if they, because I guess they're afraid, like, if he did an interview with, like, to Steven Totillo, let's say, and he says something slightly out of context, then, like, it's a firestorm over well, there. They gotta like fix something. I think it's Neil who doesn't want to do interviews with with people. Yeah, and it's like Sony's basically like he's like, ah, it's my own company. Yeah. Like I should be fine. And then they fucking do this shit. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's do the backlog. All right. Backlog. 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 It feels weirder when there's not an audience. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this whole show feels weirder Even without though an audience. they're not here. Yeah. It's just it feels weirder yeah. when there's not people yeah. popping up on screen. Anyway, uh, it's the backlog. Hey, it's the backlog. This is a segment of the show where we go through our gaming backlog. Every video game we've ever bought, we write down in a little Excel spreadsheet and we talk about it at this part of the show, regardless of whether or not we played it. 960? 960. Okay. Is that? No, no, no. no. Is that how many we oh, have? Oh, how many we have? Uh, f- e- yeah, 960. Oh, okay. And we're going for number 794. 794. And that is 
Ooh, Bionic Commando rearmed for the Xbox 360. Holy crap. Okay. This You got this. I got this game. So let me You were you are a big Bionic Commando let, fan let me, for a hot minute. Let me back up for a second, because there's a there's a lot of story and context I need to give for why I bought this game. Okay. I bought this game. The f- is this Bionic Commando Rearm or you should own the the shitty remake? <laughs> this is the shitty remake. Yeah, you want Bionic Commando Rearmed. That's uh, the that, side for, scroller. For the record, that came up when I searched rearmed. Okay, no, because that this was at the time they were trying to bring back Bionic Commando, and they did rearmed, which is a, you love this term, 2.5D remake of the original NES game. Okay, hold on. This is Bionic Commando rearmed. This is Bionic Commando rearmed 2? Does that even exist? That, that does exist. Okay. That's not what we're talking about. Okay, okay. I, so, didn't, yeah. I had no idea. So there's Bionic Commando rearmed, which is a... F- modernized remake of the nes game from back in the day and then there was bionic commando 2008 which is a full modern 3d reinvention of the series that's the one where they put his dead wife in his arm okay <laughs> we're talking about bionic commando rearm this so, looks terrible let me explain why i bought this game okay. i bought this game purely because of the strength of its soundtrack this is i'm not exaggerating here my favorite video game soundtrack period the music in this game is incredible. It's phenomenal. I had a friend, this is before the days of Dropbox. I had a friend email me the, the tracks, track by track, so I can like listen to it in college. And it was like all I listened to for like it's it's an original three soundtrack. It's that's the thing. It's the NES soundtrack, but it's like remade and modernized in a way that doesn't just sound like a straight recreation of it. They change tempo and like pacing and mood. And like they do just enough that like turns it from like, yeah, that this is it. This is gonna sound bad. This is gonna sound terrible, but like, like it just builds you up, and it's like when it gets going, and it kicks in, and you're not gonna do it. (laughs) But it just turns everything from like what could have been just the standard like, you know, EDM remix of the soundtrack to this like wonderful techno pop odyssey through like fighting Nazis in a modernized world. You got like the hard hitting tracks, you got like the dark tracks, the moody tracks, you got the chill tracks. It's just incredible. It sets the tone perfectly for like, even not just the game, but for like listening to you on your own. Like you can do anything to this soundtrack. It is incredible. I'm not a final person. If this game ever came out on final, I will buy it in a heartbeat. And those are just, uh, these are these are the NES songs. Yeah, just redone. Just redone. The the composer was Simon Vicklin, who I think is actually like a lead designer on the game itself. And it's like I said, it's the it is hands down my favorite video game soundtrack ever. Period. And I am I'm an old fart. I've heard a lot of video game soundtracks. This is the best. That's crazy. Yeah, because the game looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the game is fine <laughs> but the thing is, okay so like eventually like i had to get the game and play the game and try the game because the soundtrack was just so good the the problem with the game is it's a remake of the nes game from back in the day uh-huh. for better and worse they do change a lot of it like it's not just you know what the game was they actually use the arm more than it, they did in the original. So in the original Bionic Commando, like you used the arm to swing, and mm-hmm. that was it. This game, they added like uh, proper physics to it, so like you can control the momentum of the swing. You can grab enemies with the arm. You can grab objects with the arm and throw them at the enemies. There's a lot more puzzle solving you can do with it. Um, they revamped the boss fights in it, so they're less you know hard and less obtuse than they were in the original. But you're still dealing with like all the crap of like an an old like hard on purpose NES game of like confusing level design of hard enemies uh, that aren't hard because of a good challenge, but hard because they want you to just keep playing and they don't want you to return the game to blockbuster. And yeah, I just, I just look, I played it for a while. I just was not like feeling it, which made me feel crazy because this game was getting like stellar reviews across the board. Yeah. It has an 85 on Metacritic, yeah, which is pretty damn good for how this game looks. I mean, you gotta I know remember, it's a, it's a PlayStation 3 game. Yeah, it's an Xbox. It was like an, one of the first Xbox Live arcade games on the 360. Yeah. We got it on 360. 
I think this is my crazy conspiracy theory brain working here. But I think the reason why it did so well was because this was an era when games journalists, the scariest people in, in, <laughs> in the game world, most of the people who were reviewing games at the time grew up with yeah. the NES. Yeah. And now they were of an age where like they they were nostalgic for things like this and they wanted to play these games again but like looked better than pixel art and that's what this game is it's the same game just it doesn't have pixel art i like the idea a lot like yeah like it's it's a game that we haven't seen since since the nes yeah. uh re remastered and we didn't get anything like that around that time we yeah. didn't get nes games made brand new all of a yeah. sudden uh, and released on Xbox Live Arcade. That's yeah. we didn't get small games then. It was, yeah, this it was, was just like the $60 perfect. This or nothing. was the perfect uh, t test case for that. Yeah. yeah. So, so I understand why people would really like that. Uh, the game just it, it doesn't look good. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, not just visually, it just looks like like not that great of a game. Yeah. But again, now we have the hindsight of having people remaster games all the time or release smaller games for yeah. $20. Back then, we didn't really get a lot of that stuff. Uh, also, we grew up with an NES. Uh, we did not grow up with Bionic Commando. Right. Yeah, no, we were, we grew up at the tail end of the NES life cycle. I'm yeah. talking about these were people who grew up with, like, the whole generation. No, I understand. And had, like, more access to the entire library. Had we been older, would we have even known about Bionic Commando as kids? Because I didn't know about it until uh, way later. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, that was not even a thought in my mind going yeah. to Funko Land. If I saw <laughs> Bionic Commando, I'd be like, get this out of my face. Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't I know. I want my Mega Man's, my Ninja yeah. Gaiden. I mean, we might have known because it, it's a Capcom game. So we might have seen the logo and be like, oh, that's the same logo from the Mega Man. <laughs> from that really hard game yeah. with the blue guy in it. So, uh, yeah, th like I said, this came out when they were trying to bring back Bionic Commando. There was this, and then there was the shitty, like, modernized third-person remake um, where the... That's what I thought. Yeah. I, th I was thinking of the shitty third-person no, remake. No, it's not that. And then there was a sequel, Bionic Commando Rearm 2. Game looks the same. It does. also has, like, a decent not as good as this but like a decent soundtrack um that game did not score well and again my conspiracy theory brain is that it's the same and people no, realize <laughs> well no it's the same but people gave it bad reviews because they added the ability to jump and by in oh. this in the in the original nes game and this you couldn't jump you had to use your arm to get from place to place that was the whole point but I'll be honest, there were a lot of parts in Bionic Commander Rio where I'm like, this would be so much easier if I could just jump. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they added the ability to jump. You can apparently you can beat the whole game without jumping. Like they made it so that you can do that. But I think people just saw that you, they added the ability to jump and just gave it fives out of ten. <laughs> Cause I, I don't think there's any difference, any real substantial difference between Bionic Commander Rio one and two, other than the ability to jump. I think they just might have realized that. There's no substance anymore. It's, it's not a remake of, of the thing that they love the yeah. children. So now they're realizing, oh, wait, the game actually is not great. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, uh, I would I don't even know if this game is available anymore to buy. I mean, it was on the it's on the 360 and PS3. They're shutting down the 360 marketplace soon. It's not backwards compatible. I don't know if it's on like Steam or anything like that. I see a Steam link. Okay, so it's on Steam if you really want to play well, it. Yep, ten bucks. Okay. Uh, I don't. I also don't think they ever put this out physically on like a, on like a disc. Bionic Commando Rearm Two is backwards compatible on Xbox One, and there was a physical release for it, but not the one that people actually seem to like. I see it on Xbox Marketplace. Where yeah, buy a game. Well, that's the 360 Marketplace, which they're shutting down soon. Oh, I thought it was shut down already. No. Okay, so, so get it while you can if you want. If you but really it's, want, it, I, like, I think it's cheaper on Steam. Probably. Oh, it's the same price. Yeah, like again, you there's got... a demo on Xbox 360 Marketplace. So try the demo if you want. You really got to be into games like this, like the old, like the old, old school style of gameplay. Um, otherwise, just hunt down the soundtrack. <laughs> Honestly, like just hunt down the soundtrack is phenomenal. If you take anything away from this episode of the backlog, just go on YouTube and listen, to the, listen to the soundtrack. Yeah. Uh, all right. So thanks for watching the backlog, everybody. Yeah. We're gonna keep doing the podcast. Uh, you should come. Yeah, the podcast. Bye. Bye.
All right. Let's plow through the rest of this real yes, quick. Yes, uh, I'm pretty sure we can just plow through the rest of it. Uh, they almost added the fuck word to sign up to Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> yeah, I heard that the voice actor was saying uh, that they almost made it rated M. Yes, Jason Griffith, who was the voice actor of Sonic and Shadow the Hedgehog uh, between 2005 and 2009. I'm just going to read his quote right yeah. now. Right, they they were going for an M rating with this game, and they hadn't heard back from the agency if they were going to get it yet. So they had me record two takes for every line, and I swear the version that was for the M rating, they had me say fuck in every single line. It was just every sentence. I would be yelling, Sonic, give me that fucking chaos emerald, <laughs> or something like that. I had no idea what was going on, but I just went with it, and I had fun. There's a hard drive somewhere with hours of recordings of Shadow yelling fuck at Tails and Sonic and stuff. He finished wistfully looking off into the distance. I mean, I know they like they wanted to make this like the the harder, edgier Sonic game, but like really want to go that hard. <laughs> I th is it true that when he falls in the game, he's he, like, "Damn it!" He goes, "Damn!" Yeah, damn that. Now that's edgy. Yeah. Uh, you know what's not edgy? Guns. You know what is edgy? Damn. <laughs> I hope in the movie there's guns. Uh, I, I hope, hope he's got to pick up a gun at least. Once. I want. I kind of want it to be like. You remember in episode three when Obi Wan picks up a gun and then he goes so uncivilized and throws it. I want, I want it to be that. I want it to just look at it and go, no, just throws it. But it's Keanu Reeves doing the voice, so it's got to be like, I need guns. I wouldn't Lots mind if he guns. just picks it up and starts blasting. That, <laughs> that would be fun, just out of nowhere. Because yeah. if if you don't know the games or or really just the one game, yeah. if you don't know about the one Shadow of the Hedgehog yeah. game. It would be really wild to yeah. see a cartoon hedgehog in a movie pick up a gun and just start blasting. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, take two CEO uh, on GTA 6 coming to PC. Uh, well, that's the thing, because as of right now, it's not coming to PC. It's just coming to PS5 and Series X and S. Mm -hmm. um, so in an interview with uh, T.D. Cowan, take two CEO Strauss Zelnick asked about uh, the PC release. Uh, and this is what he said. Well, the lack of an announcement is not something that could be set in stone as near as I could tell, because the only thing that happens after the after the lack of an announcement is an announcement, I suppose, or or a continuing lack of an announcement. I guess that could happen, too. It doesn't seem to me that either would be set in stone. That's the most nothing I've that, heard from, I, a, from a PR guy. First, he kills uh, Roll7. And then denies that he killed Roll7. Mm -hmm. And now he's doing this nonsense. That's I, such a long oh way God. to say we have nothing to announce. But Rockstar has an approach to platform. He, he continues. Rockstar has an approach to platforms, which we've seen before. And they will make more announcements in due time. I do believe that the right strategy for our business is to be where the consumer is. And historically, what, hit, what this company has done is address consumers uh, anywhere they are on any platform that makes sense over time. Like, I don't understand why he just doesn't, doesn't just say, like, Rockstar is different. They set the release dates for their games. We let them do what they do. Because that's what it is. Rockstar traditionally has not released a Grand Theft Auto game on PC at the same time as the consoles. So, like, that's all you need to say. PC version's coming out later. Sorry. Well, I feel like he doesn't know. He probably doesn't know. <laughs> I would not be surprised if Rockstar keeps him in the dark. On like yeah. what they're doing. Because I'm sure if it were up to him, we would have had Grand Theft Auto 6, 7, 8, 9 by now. Yeah. He he, sh he should have just said, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next, Red Falls final update arrives with offline mode as Arcane Austin devs praise their departing colleagues. Uh, yeah. So we're finally get. Uh, I think oh, yeah. it came out already. Yeah. Has received his final update as the developers themselves are purged by parent company Microsoft. Uh. All, of, all the upgrades from the community standing st uh, skill tree are meant to provide with you with a mix of quality of life and gameplay benefits the developers note. A few of the traits will even help collectors finish out their hunt for cosmetics and grave locks. Uh, yeah. So, and it added uh, an offline mode, which is what they wanted to do like a long time ago. And then they got shut down. Uh, also of note, I don't think we have a article for it, but... Uh... Cyberpunk, they just announced that nobody's working on it anymore. Yeah, for the first time in like 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> Which is uh, insane to think about. Yeah. What's the latest consensus on Cyberpunk? Is it... People like it. Is it good now? Yeah, people say like, it finally got good. Okay. So so I, it's enough? We're good? They're yeah. ready to start working on something else? Yeah. And like, that makes me excited to like, want to play it again. 
because like I did think there was a good game there, and when I booted it up uh, on the Series X, I was like, that was I was actually like impressed by like how good it looked. So maybe so. so just for shits, I decided to look up how many people are currently playing Redfall. Yeah, uh, 116 on this Sunday afternoon. Okay, I mean it is a random time. It is a random time. Uh, I was a- I'm actually a little surprised that yeah. it's 116. That's enough to get like some decent games in. Yeah. And that is a uh, plus 2.7 30 day gain. And it's uh, about a 10% gain of Okay. So, it's actually up a little. <laughs> there you but go. But it is a it is a weekend, yeah. I guess. Uh all right. So, next we have Toys for Bob. Hey, that's me. Yeah, that's you. Uh, yeah, Toys for Bob, the Skylander, Spyro, and Crash Bandicoot Studio uh, have reached an agreement with Microsoft for its next game. We're excited to announce that we will be partnering with Xbox to publish our next game studio. Uh, our next game, said the studio, which split from Activision this year following Microsoft's acquisition of the publisher. So Toys for Bob like got out, and then Xbox is like, "Hey, I'm back here." That this tells me. Uh, they just did not want to work on Call of Duty. That's yeah, what I'm getting at. 100%. Uh, and it sounds like this was probably something that was happening for a while. That yeah. It was probably in motion for a while. They were like, we got to get out of here because we got to work on our own stuff and yeah. not Call of Duty every year. Because Activision's like, guys, all hands on deck for Call yeah. of Duty every single goddamn year. Uh, so they were probably already in the process of leaving and Microsoft probably knew that, uh, that this was going to be part of the deal. And then uh, they saw that, uh, and then, uh, you know, now Microsoft's the head. It would be easy for them to work with yeah. Microsoft. Yeah, and so. it, hopefully this means they can work on something on their own. I know everyone's saying, like, oh, we're going to get a new Crash game or a new Spyro game. Yeah. This is their opportunity to not do that. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing an original IP. Yeah. Program, but regardless i think that they will do something great with yes. what they're what they're doing regardless of whether or not they're part, partnered with microsoft i don't think that really adds anything yeah i think they would have been fine either way mm-hmm. all right and finally we have your steam li- library dies with you oh i yes. heard about this yes uh via ars F- technica fuck this i'm <laughs> getting around this for sure uh a user on Reset Era posted a reply that they received from steam support regarding their question of passing on their steam library through a will Unfortunately, Steam accounts and games are non-transferable, replied a representative from Valve. Steam support cannot provide someone else with access to the account or merge its contents with another account. I regret to inform you that your Steam account cannot be transferred via a will. So how would they even know? Like, just here's... I think My will will have all of my passwords in it. Right. I think it's more so not necessarily like you giving someone your password username and password it's more so the games in your library yeah. just appearing in somebody else's library i understand like when i when i eventually go my steam games are not going to magically appear in my kids steam library they have to get my username and password however family sh- family plans. sharing yes. yeah just don't close the account yeah of the deceased but, just be in the family plan okay but by the same token this this question now opens up the broader topic of what's going to happen with all these digital goods that we're buying after we go. Cause it's not just steam. It's Xbox. It's PlayStation. It's yeah. iTunes. It's Amazon. It's, you know, it's everything now. So like my iTunes library, who's going to get that? Yeah. And that's something that these companies all benefit from is that hundred uh, percent. Yeah. There is no used sale. Yeah. So that's, each person needs their own game. You can, yeah. Like pass it around. Yeah. So, I mean, look, fam, uh, the family account is great. It like helps that, but that's only going so far. It's only, there's only so much you can do with that. A, a better option would be like transfer to this person when I die. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Like a digital will. Yeah. Uh, my wife said to me during dinner the other day, I think we need to start thinking about a will I'm like now that's me. I am the will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So now I got I got this to consider. Now like, who's get gonna get lawyer. my Steam library? Yeah, the, yeah. I, I th- this is a this is a little stupid. It, it's stupid and it's like morbid, but like you know, this is the world we live in now. Yeah, we gotta think about these things. Just write down all your shit. And yeah, put it put it in uh put it in your will. <laughs> um. All right, that's everything. Yes. Uh. Now we'll do this. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. 
And it's a oh, little Jesus bit. Christ. It's a little bit on topic. Uh, yeah, it is. It's from Insane Poses. Yeah, and it's uh just a Renaissance painting of uh an attractive woman laying with Shadow the Hedgehog. Yep. I mean, he could. Yeah, absolutely. He, she kind of looks like Kristen Ritter, and she's in the Sonic Three. So Kristen Ritter's. In yeah, a, I also don't know who that is. Jessica Jones. TV oh. Jessica Jones. She's in Sonic. Three? Yeah. Is she a new character? Or, I don't know. Has I, she been in any of the other ones? No, she has not been in any of the other ones. Oh, she's Maria. No, she's not. There's someone else is Maria. Oh, we know who Maria yeah, is. Yeah, we know who Maria is. I'm so excited for Sonic 3. Because it's gonna be insane. <laughs> <laughs> the the question is, are they gonna do the Knuckles and Rouge the Bat side quest where they just go hunted for emeralds for like Do we know that Rouge hours? the Bat's gonna be in it? I don't know. Because that's also insane yeah. to have like an anthropomorphic bat with tits. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh hey, that's the show. We don't yeah. have any comments from last week because No, uh, we, we don't. We, yeah. We, we, uh, we pulled those late. Yeah. Um so I guess that I, I guess is all usually yeah. we have like a whole thing. Usually we talk to people, yeah, but there's, but nobody there's nobody here. to talk to here. All, so uh, hey, how's how you been? You all right? I'm you, fine. You okay. I yeah. got I got a lot to do. Yeah. I gotta shoot B roll today. Oh that's I'm the leaving. Worst. I'm yeah. leaving tomorrow yeah. for a week. So there's no streams. Yeah. Sorry. But, uh but I hope you enjoyed the, the show. Oh, how are you? Oh, um, <laughs> it was all right. I got a Steam Deck. <laughs> that's refurbished. Yeah. That's very good. I tell you, honestly. Refurb is the way to go. Refurb MacBook, refurb Steam Deck. That's a you refurb say, too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did so I much. tell you my I have this stage lighting issue on mine? Uh, no. I need I need to pull up like a white. Uh, oh, you can kind of see it there. You see that? Oh yeah. It's like dim. Mm. That's the, that sucks. That's yeah. because I always use it closed. Really? That's what'll do. I it? think the heat goes there. Because mm. that that's where the heat comes. Yeah. From. Yeah. I think that's what happened. Mm. Interesting. Anyway, thanks for watching. Yeah, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden and youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. But if you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, Audible.com. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps with the placement on all those respective platforms. Uh, we'll be back to the regularly scheduled Wolf Den podcast on Twitch uh, next week. Yeah. Also, I'll probably stream. Uh, thanks for being here. See you later. Goodbye. Bye.